we really wanted to meet you because we finished the hearings, debates and assessment of the Commission. And today it was decided that next week in Strasbourg we'll have the vote on the College. And obviously if it's a favourable vote then on 1st December the Commission will be able to start its work. We're a month late vis-à-vis -vis the time frame that we had set out previously. We're very satisfied because the Parliament really took this process seriously and that was thanks to the work of information. The assessment of the Commissioners was a trying task for Parliament and extremely important. Obviously there was a lot of public attention thanks to you on the issue. I think we surpassed all levels in this process in relation to the past legislature and obviously that's extremely important. It's important that the Parliament confirms itself at the centre of the European decision-making process and ensuring that this can happen with the, as the executive branch of the European Union. That's extremely important for us. Obviously we want to continue our work. The Parliament must ensure coherency as regards the commitments that have been made by President von der Leyen and by the Commissioners. This publication is quite interesting. It includes the main points of all of the hearings that were held for each individual commissioner and all of the commitments that they have made. We will be following closely the coherency of their actions. This morning we had a final dialogue between the Executive Vice Presidents at the Conference of Presidents meeting and at the end a decision was taken to conclude the process and to present the College of Commissioners next Wednesday in Strasbourg. Obviously the end of this process is also the start of the legislature. Questions and answers. Franziska Bruch, German News Agency, KNA. Um, I have one question on the title um, of the dossier of Maria Gabriel. Uh, several MEPs asked that culture would also be included in the title, and I think um, as it's not the case. Um, is the Parliament still sad about that, or is it okay now that culture is not in the title? As you know, because I was here and I spoke to you about this. The word culture was supposed to enter the portfolio. I think at the moment, today in fact, requests have been made by ministers for culture to ensure that this term culture be included in the portfolio. We certainly hope for that and we will be satisfied with this new definition. Today, the Culture Council meeting will take place, and I think a lot of the Ministers for Culture will speak about this issue, and they will call for the inclusion of the word culture in the definition of the portfolio. Catherine Fjord, EU reporter. Uh, the European Commission launched an infringement procedure last week insisting that the UK nominate a candidate uh, at, with a deadline of tomorrow. What will you do if no candidate is nominated by the British government tomorrow? The deadline is Friday the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. This Friday. And agreement has been made on this between Council and Parliament. 
and we will see if the 27 commissioners are there and I think the answers and questions that were given by the British authorities are satisfactory for us. On this point too, I wanted to ask you, you, what are you expecting at the moment? The approval of the list of the 27 commissioners in co-repair tomorrow, I guess. Or are you waiting for the infringement procedure deadline to pass? No. You mentioned the Council Legal Service and the Commission. The Parliament has not made a statement on this, has it? Yes, it has. And is there an agreement? Yes, that will be enough. And if nothing new happens, things are quite strange at the moment, a declaration will be made by Council following a procedure. And this has been done in complete transparency. A legal assessment has been made of the establishment of the 27 commissioners in the Commission. An assessment made by the legal services of the Parliament and of the Commission too. And they are in full agreement. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, sì, buongiorno, Angela Mauro, Affinton Post. Io volevo... Thank you. I wanted to ask something quite different. In the Conference of Presidents today, I wonder whether you talked about whether or not you might discuss Bolivia, um, Chile, uh, and so on, either together or separately. All of the um, instances of uh, disorder that are threatening rights, etc. Yes, there will be a lot of debates on international issues. As soon as the agenda is ready, then we will send that out to you. Um, looking at international issues, um, the Middle East, uh, other conflicts around the world. All of these uh, areas of conflict, we've seen this in a number of. Uh, in recent weeks, that a number of conflicts are uh, arising, and of course, we're paying attention to these issues, not just internationally, but anything that concerns human rights. These rights are very much at the heart of a lot of the national crises that you were referring to. Oliver Grimm with the Austrian newspaper Die Presse. Hi, thank you. Uh, concerning the absence of the British member of the Commission, what makes you so confident, in spite of the legal opinions of lawyers in the Council, and the Parliament and the Commission, that the very first state aid decision of the von der Leyen Commission won't be challenged, or the very first merger decision of the von der Leyen Commission or any other commission, because it was taken by a college of only 27? Is it worth the risk? Because the legal services are just where well, these are groups of lawyers, with qualified opinions, but in the end, it'll be the European Court that decides. Well, what would you suggest? I'm a lawyer by training as well, but a really rotten one. But I'm just wondering if it wouldn't have been better maybe to wait a bit or to wait uh, how this, you know, infringement procedure of the Commission would have turned out, or maybe it would have been better to ask the Brits before Perda entered into force or before the election campaign started to nominate someone, to rob them of the argument that they... Malay. Well, what do you think? Do you think that we are so uh, incautious? Do you not think we're careful? I am... Uh, president of the e European Parliament, and I, I listen to the legal services at the moment I think they're setting out the right path so the dangers that you've referred to will of course be in the background and politically uh, speaking of course it's difficult any um, process for uh, democratic governance of the European Union is a, a difficult one. Uh, it is going to be a, a vulnerability, but of course what we need is to um, 
um, think about everything, but the legal services have been very clear. Hi, thank you very much. I am Andres Gil from El Diario.es, Spain. I, w I would like to ask you about a letter that is supposed to be sent to you yesterday from the lawyers of Carlos Puigdemont and Tony Comín due to the um, general attorney uh, conclusions in Luxembourg. They ask you to let them get into the parliament uh, due Me. to this, yes, to the, to the Bureau of the Parliament and the President of the Parliament. Yes, there is a letter. So I guess you haven't received it. No. No, I haven't received it yet. But I'm sure it's on its way. Um, we will apply the law. It's so what we've done so, so far, according to case law, jurisprudence, uh, our laws, and we will do that in light of any future decisions um, uh, made by other legal authorities. We'll apply the law. We've acted so far according to tradition, according to past experience, and according to the laws in force. But of course, we are willing to review our position should it be necessary. If a legal authority were to see things differently, then we'll review our position in the light of that. I think that's the role of the Parliament, not just to um, legislate, but to ensure that laws are respected. Uh, Swiss television. When it comes to the Spitzenkandidat, uh, the rift between Parliament and Council, I think, is at the root of many of the difficulties that we've seen in this uh, Commission. Is this wound uh, being healed? Okay, in I think that over the last few months there have been big discussions, debates. This is a parliament where we always have to try to find uh, common ground. And of course the formation of this commission and uh, what's happened in recent months in the parliament have meant that we've had to found, find um, compromises it's not that one uh, group is extremely powerful. We have a pro-European uh, grouping where we have to find common ground between the parties. There was a certain amount of animosity at the beginning, given what happened at the end of the election campaign and decisions taken about the Spitzenkandidat. It's an issue that's still alive that it's still an issue and it's something that we're thinking about so I'd ask you to follow that how will this parliament manage to produce new rules for well to in order to ensure that European democracy um, meets um, expectations that it can take decisions more rapidly that's why the Conference of Presidents has set up a working group on democracy. All political groups are represented in that. It's chaired by myself. And we are working on a new way, a new methodology um, that we hope we can send to the Commission and Council in January in order to start a new uh, listening process in which will help to ensure that we can properly listen to public opinion. For example, the parliament could talk to national parliaments and talk about European rules. We want citizens, young people, uh, people from universities, from culture, from research centres to help us um, so we can all think together about the European Union and how to reform it. One of the de democratic instruments that we've always said is the idea of a Spitzenkandidat, but also the right to a veto. Also the Parliament's right to initiative. There are a lot of things that could be improved if we want the European Union to um, really be up to the job of facing the issues that exist today. Now, of course, this is something that is going to require the whole of this parliamentary term, and we hope that it will yield positive results. 
I don't know whether you noted what happened at the last council. You had the European Parliament, the European Commission, a council, the presidency of the council, and 25 countries out of 28 who said yes to um, accession for North Macedonia and Albania. And yet it's been held up by three countries. So I think it's a good t idea to review our rules because what we want is a democracy that can make decisions, not just block things, not just hold them up. It's easy to do that. What we want is to make decisions. So that's one example of an instrument that has to be reformed. Democracy is only good for citizens if it produces positive results. So I would, ask, I would urge all of the pro-European forces to be very cautious because the extremist nationalist uh, trends um, should not prevail. And if we're to prevent them from prevailing, then we have to help citizens understand that democracy is good for them. It improves their lives. It's not just something for legal experts to discuss. We want to have a political discussion about the future of the European Union and um, the value, the worth of democracy in Europe. So I thank you for your question, because I would also ask you to help us. Help us to communicate that the Parliament, and I very much hope the other institutions genuinely want to listen to what citizens told us in the last elections and take that seriously. We have to protect Europe, but we have to change it as well. Thank you very much. Merci à tous. Bene, grazie. Buon lavoro, eh? Buon lavoro.